So they say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And it's pretty, pretty accurate. The unfortunate reality in today's world is a lot of first impressions stem from what we see online, whether that be through dating apps, through social media. But I still think that even though there may be that first impression digitally, there's always this first impression when we meet in real life, when we go on that first date. And I want to equip you with some tools that you can use to make yourself a lot more attractive, desirable, and have that great first impression that can lead to many more dates with an individual, all right? Now, I know some of you might be saying, listen, I ain't got time to be trying to do this, that, and the other for no man. <laughs> listen, don't let pride get in the way of doing things that can make your life easier and better, all right? Plain and simple. And all the suggestions I give you are with love and you're more than welcome to comment below on your thoughts on what I'm saying, but consider it. And, and if you're a believer, I'm gonna say, pray about what I'm telling you because I really think if you try these things out, you are going to see some awesome results. So let's get to the first thing you can do to drive men wild on that first date. And that's where little to no makeup. Let me explain, because I know makeup is a sensitive topic for a lot of women. And I understand that many of you express that you are not wearing makeup for men. I'm not even here to argue that right now. What I will say is, regardless of who you're wearing it for, it has an impact on how a man receives you, especially when you go out on a date. The reality is that in today's world, a lot of women, and maybe you may not be you, are putting on heavier layers of makeup than once upon a time. I always say like makeup used to be to enhance, but for many makeup now transforms. And because of this reality, men have become more skeptical and more cautious when it comes to dealing with a woman who wears a lot of makeup because he can't trust that when the makeup comes off, you look remotely the same or close to what you did with it, all right? Now, here's the crazy thing, because I don't want y'all to think that's shade, right? Because some, some women, a lot of women, take the makeup off and they're literally more beautiful. I, and I'm going to say in fairness, in my opinion and in the opinions of many men, some may disagree, the woman may disagree, I don't know, but I have witnessed where I'm like, yo, why does she even wear the makeup? Like, she is stunning without it. But again, I understand some of you still enjoy it, maybe want to switch things up, whatever. So this is not an argument against makeup in general, right? Though some men would argue they wish women would wear less of it altogether, but at least for the first date, you want to tone it down and you want to focus more on the enhancing and less the transforming. You want to make sure that, listen, when the makeup comes off, I still, it's still close. It still looks close. It just, the makeup was just, again, a, a, a enhanced version, more blush, eyeliner, whatever y'all put on your face. I, I'm not, you know, makeup literate, but Consider that um, because, again, what's also happening is you have some situations where man meets woman, they go on a date, she's wearing all this makeup, and some men may not even be, uh, they may not be aware of what is a lot of makeup on a, on a woman. So anyways, to him in her current makeup form, she, he finds her very attractive. They continue to go on more dates, she's wearing, continue to wear makeup. But at some point, at some point, the makeup has to come off. And there have been many situations where once the makeup came off, he was like, yo, I didn't, this is not what I thought. And then he walks away. And as messed up as that sounds, the reason why I'm encouraging you to take a different approach is because I don't want your time wasted. Again, we're not here to discuss whether that's fair or men should be this way. No, I'm here to say, listen, this is what happens. And if we want to avoid these types of traps and, and things that will make you even more hurt in the long run, well, here's a way to go about that. But also the other reason why little to no makeup on that first date is so powerful is because 
Yo, if he finds you attractive without all this extra stuff, then it's like it's a, it's a solidified attraction now. You know what I'm saying? And he feels even more confident about pursuing you because he knows that, again, he's getting a woman that he in her natural state or close to it, he is very much attracted to. All right? This is kind of hitting me, so I have to mention this. I know of situations where the man is with the woman, but he, he wants her to wear makeup almost all the time. All right? Now, in fairness, I don't know what, he, I haven't spoken to this man. I don't know what his motivation is. But some could argue he's simply not happy with that woman without makeup. He's not willing to leave for whatever reasons, but he's like, well, you got to keep that makeup on if I'm going to deal with this. Now, I'm sorry to laugh a little bit, but I'm saying that's, that's just an unfortunate situation. So again, little to no makeup, very good. Give it a try. I think you'll, you'll, enjoy the pro you'll enjoy the results of it. All right, so second thing now you can wear to drive men wild on that first date is something that's sexy but comfortable, okay? So here's what I, I want to start with comfortable, why that's so important. I have seen many cases of women trying to dress up to appeal to men but dressing up in ways that don't really sit well with them, they're not really comfortable in, they, whether that be they're not comfortable with the look of it or they're literally not comfortable because of how it feels, okay? Let's say, for example, you're trying super hard to squeeze into these jeans and it's cutting off some of the air supply, <laughs> all right? And it's like making things rough for you. Well, here's the thing, if you're uncomfortable, that can then show up in the energy that you're giving off on the date. And the man is not aware. He doesn't know that, that your jeans are super tight and you're struggling. He doesn't know that your feet are killing you because you're wearing these shoes that might be super cute and you would really want to wear them, but they're not making you feel good. All he knows is you coming across irritable, grumpy, frustrated, whatever it is. Now, you may think, you're hiding it well, but a lot of times you're not hiding it as well as you think you are. So for that man, he may wander off into thinking you're not interested, you have a bad attitude. There's so many things, so many negative conclusions that he can come to because he is not fully aware of what's really ailing you in that moment. So it's important that you remain comfortable. Now, when we say sexy, I want you to think first in the context of what you feel sexy in, all right? Because again, it goes back to being comfortable, not just with how it feels, but how it looks to you. If you are wearing something, for example, let's just say uh, a low cut dress that's showing some cleavage looks really sexy on you to some people, but to you, you feel like it got you looking like your breasts are all hanging out and, and you just don't, you're, you're a more modest woman than that. This is not really your style. This does not work for you, right? Then again, you're not going to feel sexy. You're going to feel awkward. And it goes back to the energy that you will give off in that awkward feeling. You will not give off an energy of being confident and understand that being confident makes you look more sexy. Confidence enhances someone's presentation, all right? So you want to find the things that not just maybe are appealing to the eyes and, and how people perceive it, but again, how you feel in it. If you feel good, if you feel confident, all these different things. And so I would encourage you as a woman to, um, you know, try different outfits that you, like, find that style, maybe that first date, when I say uniform, I'm not saying wear the same exact thing every first date you go on, but there might be a certain style that you know, when I'm wearing this kind of style, I feel good, I feel sexy, I feel comfortable, and that's like your set style for your first dates. Because again, we wanna make that first impression a great impression. And making sure you have the right energy coming across is going to be very important. Oh, now, before I continue, I have a couple more things I wanna mention. One, make sure that whatever your style is, like, let me reverse that a little bit. 
Don't present a style that you know ain't you and you're not going to sustain. So this is like the equivalent to where I'll tell a man, don't take women out on dates. And we're, we're talking from the standpoint of cost, all right? An expensive, fancy old restaurant. When you know you like just having Popeyes and liquor at home, right? Like if you're just this simple guy who wants to order pizza all the time, you don't want to misrepresent uh, what you are willing to bring to this, to this potential relationship and how you're willing to go out. You want to try to find something that's closer to your true sustainable way of life, your sustainable lifestyle. So if a, for you as a woman, I would hate for you to come on that first date trying to be all super sexy and wearing, let's say, a little bit more revealing things. And listen, whether you want to wear something that shows cleavage or tight or whatever, I'm not here to, you know, judge that or whatever the case may be. If I'm being honest with y'all, I'm just going to keep it real. I like a woman that dresses sexy. Listen, I know it's not for everybody. I know some may say, well, God said you need to be modest. I get it. This is one of my struggles, all right? I'm just going to keep it real. If you're with me, I, not only do I like the woman to dress sexy if I'm going on a date, if you, if you become my wife, I'm going to encourage you to dress sexy. That's my thing. But, but some men are more into modesty. But regardless of what the man is into, whether that be me with the sexy or the man with the modest, you got to present what's true to you, all right? Where you are happy, where you are comfortable, and what you can sustain. Because again, I wouldn't want you coming out on the date trying to be extra sexy when you know very well you don't like dressing like that. And then I get with you, and every time I'm out with you, you want to dress ultra conservative, you know, like some might say an old lady, no offense to old ladies, you know what, let's just scratch the old lady part, let's just say you, you don't want to be ultra conservative, all right, if, if that man is looking for something a little bit more, you know, uh, provocative, so to speak. And then also, you know, understand there's a time and place for everything. So also, yes, even for me, I may like a woman who dresses sexy, but I also understand where are we going? Where, what, you know, what's the environment we're going to be in? Because that plays a role in dictating how we should dress for this environment. So you want to be mindful of also considering the environment that you're going to be in with this man and how you should show up with your dress code. All right, so let's keep this going. Another thing you can do to drive men wild, another thing you can wear to drive men wild on that first date is to wear red. Now, let me say this. I got this because there was a study that shows that wearing red is very effective. You know, it, it communicates, forgive me, I forgot the exact things it communicates. I'm going brain dead right now for a second. But the point is, they found it to be very effective. Now, I don't want to focus on just red. Do I think red is great? Yeah, red is great. But I do, I do suggest, if not red, wearing brighter colors, all right? Wearing what I would call more feminine colors, things that bring out a different kind of energy. I know for a lot of women, there's a tendency to wear black. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you wear black, you're gonna ruin your first date or that man won't find you attractive. No, I think that's unreasonable to make a statement like that. But I do, I, I'm a firm believer that Colors emit, not even believer, it, it's a fact. Colors emit energy. Colors can give off a certain signal. And so it, the man can, it, it, I've, I've run this test with a lot of women where those who tend to wear very dark colors, black, gray, navy blue, all these things. And I tell them, listen, try to wear colorful clothes for this week. Let's see what happens. And it's never failed. They always come back saying they see a difference. They see a difference in how men are responding to them, how people are responding to them, but even better, how they feel themselves. So how we dress affects our energy and mood as well. We may not always be conscious of that, but it's true. It's one of the reasons why businesses make people dress up to come to work because they know in the context of if you dress too casually, that could affect your work productivity. That could affect how you approach the day and, and, and how, you, how focused you are. So you want to be mindful of that. But, but going back to the colors, yes, I do believe that bright colors are good, 
are positive things to try out. And, and, and it's something that I would encourage for you to do in general, not just on your first date. So again, if you are someone who tends to wear dark colors all the time, and again, I'm not saying you gotta get rid of all your dark colors, right? Or all your, the, your black dresses. I know some of y'all have these go-to black dresses. I get it, but I try it out. Just try it out. You're gonna see, you're gonna see, and I definitely think it will have a positive impact on that first date. But as the study says, the study says wear red. So you can go all the way with the red or just try some different colors. All right, so let's keep this going. So another thing you can wear to drive men wild on that first date is wear something that accentuates one of your positives. Now, hear me out, <laughs> hear me out, okay? Because I know that might be taken the wrong way. So here's the thing. It's not that I'm trying to have you like use your body, so to speak. Um, and it's not, and, and please don't just think it's a body thing and I'll explain in a second, right? It's that I think, again, when we're trying to make that first impression, I think almost everybody, if not everyone, has certain positives. It might be a nice smile. It might be beautiful eyes. Um, it, it might be, uh, again, it might be a nice body, it might be nice legs, it might be a nice chest, whatever the case may be. You know, we, we have different things that are, do well for us, right? And I think that when we're going on that first date and we're trying to present ourselves in a, in a positive and effective light, I do think that it's wise, it's smart to try to accentuate one of your positives, all right? And so again, not crossing a line that you feel would, uh, you know, go against your values or anything like that. But let's just say, for example, you have beautiful eyes. So you just a very nice structure to your face. But then maybe you wear your hair back in a way that brings out your eyes more. You know what I'm saying? If you have nice lips, maybe wearing a, the, the proper lipstick or lip gloss or something that accentuates that. I think these are all good things. Again, I think some people, when they hear it, they might just think you're, you're trying to, I'm trying to tell y'all to give off a sexual energy, so to speak. But it's not really about that. Though I, I acknowledge that some of your positives might lean more towards the sexual energy, right? Because if you have, let's say, a nice chest and you show cleavage, okay, I get it, all right? So I can understand that there's gonna be some hesitation depending on what your positive is. But I do think that it, some of these things can be done in a very subtle way, or at least you can wear outfits that work for you, not against you, all right? Because some people, even if you're not trying to accentuate a positive, some people, their outfit, like, it made them look worse than they are. It, 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 it actually hurt them rather than help them. And so I think being mindful of that, and one of the ways to be mindful of the type of outfit that really works well with you is getting the opinion of the opposite sex. I think what I've seen a lot of women do is they go to other women to get their opinion on their outfit, their this and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying you can't talk to your girlfriends, that's cool. But if you're going on a date with a man, it would, excuse me, it would be wise to get the opinion of other men if you can, because some of you may not have men in your life, you may not have access to that, I get it. But if you do, let them give you some input. Let them give you some insight because they're gonna look at it through the eyes of a man. And again, we're keeping things within the structure or the box of what you're comfortable in, what you're confident in, that doesn't go against who you are, that, that isn't something that you can't sustain. So we're considering all these things, but hear what they have to say. And I, I think, again, I know this could be tricky for some, and I don't wanna be taken the wrong way, but I do think finding something that really brings out your best is a very good and effective tool to use on that first date. All right, and so now, the fifth thing, the last thing that you can do uh, to drive men wild. And after this, there's some questions I had that were submitted uh, by some of my members to my membership group, which you can join, all right? You can go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or the comment section where we do live Q and A's. There's modules on healing, tapping into your feminine energy, meeting more relationship-minded men, 
and so much more. It's an awesome experience, so take advantage of it. Join in. But yes, I got some questions, and um, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. I'm going to be answering some of those at the end of this. So stay here. Even after I give you this one point, we got some more things to discuss to, to shed some light on. But the fifth thing you can do to drive men wild is not wear no more than three inch heels. <laughs> So I couldn't, I couldn't not laugh. Listen, <laughs> so hear me out. It's, it's funny. I'm joking, but I'm not joking. I'm serious. So listen to what I'm saying. It's, let's look at this from a couple different angles. So number one, um, I, I'm not going to sit there and say that men are looking at your heels and like, oh, it's past three inches. Oh, hell no, I ain't dating her, right? No. Or, oh, okay, it's less than three inches. She's looking extra good today. No. However, we all know, listen, the height issue is an issue for a lot of people. And, and I know for most of you, you're probably already trying to choose men who you go on a date with who are already taller than you in heels. Many of you have that standard, so to speak, set. Now, I would argue, and I've said this on many times on my tours, I, I do think that the whole expecting or wanting a man to be taller than you in heels is one of those things I think a lot of women should reconsider, okay? And, and I, I, it's not that I want you to go against what you truly desire, so to speak. Um, and if it truly affects you, like if, if him not being taller than you in heels really affects the quality of the relationship, then okay, I'm not going to fight it, right? But I want to add the perspective of, listen, you're wearing those heels, what, 10% of your life? If, if even that much, it's probably way less than 10%. So you're, you're asking for a man to be taller than you 10% of the time, all right? And if he's not, some of you won't even consider him. Then you have to consider the fact that it ain't your real height. That, that, that's your fake height, okay? Like, you ain't that tall, you know what I'm saying? When you take those heels off, he is still taller than you in many cases. So it's like, hey, I don't, again, I just think you should reconsider. I'm not going to tell you to flat out drop it. I'm just going to say reconsider. But yes, going on a date with more than three inch heels can create a situation where one, it could intimidate the guy. Now, of course, if he's intimidated, that's, that's a personal problem to a certain extent. But again, it's almost like why do that with because you're having a fake height in that moment. You understand what I'm saying? And believe it or not, Sometimes a lot of men, they're not even aware that you were wearing the heels that big. So they're over here thinking, wow, she's really tall, not realizing, you know, you're actually kind of short, but you just have these big old heels on right now. So it can throw off his perception of you. And even for him, because just as women have a, a spe spe specific preference when it comes to men's height, well, there are men out there who have preferences with women's height as well. All right. So. Again, I think three inches is enough, <laughs> okay? Going past three inches is a little bit much unless he's just that tall of a guy already that going four or five, whatever, is not going to matter. But it's one of those things that I think, all right, like, let's just be, let's be considerate of it when you're going out on that date. So, like I said, there were some questions that I said I would answer at the end of this. So, let's get to them, all right? So the first question was, are there any things you shouldn't ask a man on the first date? And so in my opinion, professional opinion, it's not about putting in your, he putting in your head, I cannot ask this on the first date or I should ask this on the first date. I think the first date has to be more so about more of a natural flow of conversation. And within the natural full conversation, granted, there's going to always be some standard questions. You know, we may ask, what do you do for a living? You know, do you enjoy what you do? Do you, you know, things like that. You know, where, do you, where, where, where were you born? Where are you from? Little standard things. But I think all these other questions that we worry if we should be asking them or not, it's like if it comes about in the natural flow, then just ask it. But don't force things and break the natural flow. So it's like, listen, if we're sitting here having a conversation about our careers and our purpose and all these things, if you come out of nowhere and be like, 
so how were things with your ex? <laughs> it's like, whoa, what, what do you mean? Like, we're talking about careers and, and, and you just hit me with, like, that makes it awkward. You know what I'm saying? So, but if in the natural flow of conversation, we're talking about the relationships that we've been in and, and how our experiences have been, and then someone wants to get more specific and say, hey, well, how were things with your last relationship specifically? That's, again, within the natural flow. And so that person's not going to be put off or thrown off by that. And if, and if they're serious about you, they can probably have no problem answering that question. So focus more on just flowing, being yourself, and enjoying yourself. Because again, the energy that you give off is going to play a huge role on whether this thing moves forward or not. So be more relaxed, enjoy, and let things flow conversation-wise. All right, so now the second question I received was, Will having sex on the first date ruin the chances of a relationship? So I want to answer this honestly, but let me say this. I am in no way saying you should go have sex on the first date. All right. Um, you know, I mentioned it in many of my other videos. I, I agree with the idea that waiting is best. If we're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, that's what we're supposed to do. But I also acknowledge that most people don't make it that far, all right? And most people in today's world are engaging. That's not me saying you should. That's just me acknowledging that that's what happens for most, all right? And I, I am no different as I struggle just like many others struggle. With that said, I, when it comes to having sex on the first date, it is possible to have sex on the first date and still end up in a serious relationship, even married. There are many examples of it. However, I would never suggest to somebody that you should be trying to have it if your goal is serious relationship, all right? Now, again, hear what I said. Trying to have it versus, all right, sometimes in the natural flow of things, attraction, all this stuff, things happen, right? And I don't want you to like kill yourself over if it happened. At the same time, I do think that the longer you can wait, the better. And more specifically, you want to at least give yourself enough time to know what you're getting yourself into. Because if you as a woman are having, allow yourself to have sex on the first date with the expectation that this will now proceed into more, then when it doesn't, you feel used, you feel cheated. Well, that's a huge problem, all right? But if you... For out of your own, you know, for your own reasons, as a grown adult, decide you want to experience this and you are okay with whatever is going to happen next. That again is your choice. But also be honest with yourself because if you're a woman that gets more emotionally caught up once you're once you engage sexually, if you ha if your judgment gets clouded by having sex, all these different traps that so many people fall in, then that's more reason why you should be waiting. So again, is it possible to still have a, a relationship in marriage with sex on the first date? Yes, it's possible. But I would not suggest that being the route you take. All right. And so we got another question and it says, does the type of date he takes me on reflect his level of interest? So this is, I, I, I like this question because I think it's something that I need to discuss in regards to the fact that I, I do think there's levels to it in the sense that, all right, I think if we're grown adults and this man is taking you to McDonald's for a date, chances are, <laughs> he's, he's not that serious, all right? Chances are. I don't want to rule out exceptions, okay? Because there's exceptions to every rule. But chances are, that's not a good look because most men would already assume that this would not reflect well on them, taking you there, okay? But what I, but what I want to say about this is I do think we need to create, a, there needs to be a change in culture when it comes to first dates. I really believe that we need to simplify our first dates I think that for both sides, you know, the concern with a lot of men is money and time spent. For women, it might be sexual expectation and things of that nature. And I think that one of the ways we ease all that is, okay, we simplify the date. If we make our first dates 
about coffee dates, ice cream dates, walk in the park dates, simple, inexpensive dates. I think this is good on many levels. One, I think it takes away some of these concerns, right? Or it can help minimize them at the very least. I also think that the simpler dates allow for greater interaction so that we can see, do we really like this person or not? Because that's supposed to be the purpose of the date, to see, okay, do we get along? Do we have chemistry? Are we on the same page? I think adding all this extra fluff of this fancy restaurant or this nice concert or doing all these other different things, and it's like, yo, we're missing the point. The point isn't in the overall experience, it's more so about learning each other. So I personally believe um, well, if a woman is looking for something serious, maybe even letting that be known to the guy that, listen, on our first date, we can keep it simple, keep it nice and easy. And, and that way, we're not worried about this whole, it reflecting his interest. I, 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 I think it's going to work to the benefit of both parties if that's expressed and that's implemented, and then we can also get through these situations quicker as far as seeing, okay, th can this person stick around or we gotta let them go and move on to the next. Thank you for watching this video. I hope and pray you enjoyed it. Be sure to watch this one over here on seven reasons why dating men is so hard. So I know how many of you are feeling. You feel like dating sucks. And I understand, <laughs> and, and, and I, I hope you don't feel that way, 